So, um, yeah, one of the things that um, is, is, is very important to, uh, I'm a born again Christian, um, is the importance of um, redemption. And so we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ um, came to free us from, from sin. Because humanity, man, has a problem with sin. <clears throat> But this doesn't necessarily apply to just today, but it applies um, to past, present, and future. So when we look at, for example, the Quranic position on atonement, it seems quite sketchy, and it seems like the narrative has somewhat holes in it. So for example, when we look at Surah 19, verse 19, what we see is that the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is confirmed as pure as we see in the Quran so there's no question that the founder of the Christian faith is a pure and sinless um, person a, a pure and sinless being we believe that there has been no man perfect beside God we know that Adam was fallible we know that Adam was fallible and he and time for made me, yeah. the mistakes. Yeah, you can time if you have to. So, Sue 1919 confirms that Jesus was pure. Now, um, when we look at the person of, uh, or should we say, the founder of Islam, um, I believe you're Sunni, uh, the founder of uh, Islam, there is some questions which is, uh, which is quite interesting. So, when we look at the Quran, we see that Muhammad himself was a sinner. With respect, um, Muhammad was a sinner. So, for example, when we look at Surah 40, verse 55, it says, So be patient, O Prophet, for Allah's promise is certainly true. Seek forgiveness for your shortcomings and glorify the praises of your Lord morning and evening. So that's one. Surah 48, verse 2 says, So that Allah may forgive you for your past and future shortcomings. Perfect his favor upon you guide you along the straight path so this is Allah encouraging uh, Muhammad to ask and seek for forgiveness <clears throat> also verse four, um, surah 47 verse 19 says so know well O prophet that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness for your shortcomings and for the sins of the believing men and women for Allah knows your movements and places of rest. So what we're seeing here is on a number of occasions, Allah encouraging, encouraging Muhammad to seek forgiveness for sin. For sin. Now, the question is, is who do you trust? Do you put your trust in a sinner, the founder of your faith? Or do you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth who has been affirmed by your own book as sinless the Bible does not prophesy Muhammad the Bible does not um, say that anyone else will come after Jesus um, two minutes yeah so yeah so yeah. that's it yeah that's okay um, I'll start there the set two minutes <clears throat> and First of all, I thought you was try you were talking about um, the redemption. Yes, atonement. Sorry. Atonement. Okay. And now you ended up talking about Prophet Muhammad, whether he's a sinner or not. And you are trying to compare Prophet Muhammad and Jesus of the Bible. First of all, if you say who shall I trust? between Prophet Muhammad and Jesus. The first question you need to ask yourself is, what book shall I trust? A book that says Jesus is a sinner. Cast one by God, same as Satan. And a book that says, and the same book, which says Jesus is ungodly. Or a book says Jesus is sinless. That's the first question you need to, you should ask yourself before asking, your, asking me, who would you listen and follow 
Jesus, who is a sin, sin, who is sinless in the Quran, or Prophet Muhammad, who is a sinner in the Quran. So we need to ask first. The first question that appears to you is: you need to ask what book is more reliable. So your answer is very clear: is Quran, according to what you said, because the Bible does not agree with the Quran, because the Bible says Jesus is a sinner. The reason you get baptism is God to wash away your sins. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 3. And no one is saved unless you are baptized. Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. Again, lying is, is sin, is a sin. Revelation, chapter 8, verse 21. It says all lies will go to heaven, to hell. Jesus lied many times in the Bible. Like he said, Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, poison is medicine. Also, he said he will be in the heart of the ground for three days and three nights. But he was not in the heart of the ground for three days and three nights, but he was in the heart of the ground for two days and two, and two nights and one day. Okay, so two minutes, 27 seconds. You just give me 27 seconds. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> let me know when you're ready. Yeah, so. Just to respond, um, Siraj didn't address the um, complicated and un, uh, easy to understand uh, um, notion of the, uh, the, the atonement. I believe the atonement for the Quranic viewpoint is contradictory. So it contradicts the Abraham, Abrahamic tradition of substitutionary atonement as seen in the Torah and the law of the prophets, thus contradicting Muhammad who said that the Torah and the Gospels are a previous revelation. So he confirmed the Torah. And when you confirm the Torah, you confirm the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It says in Leviticus 17 verse 11, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So, where is the understanding of the Torah, the Levitical part, in the Quran? It's not there. It's like it's been missed. But we know Muhammad, we know that he accepted the Torah as a previous revelation. So there does seem to be some contradiction there. Where is the addressing? of Abraham who was about to sacrifice his son and God said no don't do it because God's not into 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 the land he said oh, he will provide his own land the shedding of um, rams and sheep for uh, uh, the, the, the atoning of sin we see we see that also in the holy of holies where the high priest once a year could yom, in during Yom Kippur he would have to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat and the presence of God would come down. Where is that reflected in the Quranic narrative? Nowhere. Nowhere. So the Bible says, uh, what's the time? Please. Two minutes and 12 yes. seconds. Uh, sorry, I can't. Yeah, so the Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we know that the Kaaba stone, we know that the Kaaba stone is that form of atonement. Instead of um, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who prophesied over 4,000 years as the substitutionary atonement to be the Lamb, the perfect sacrifice. You've done 40. So, I stop. I, stop. So I have to do 40. 44. Yeah, yeah. 244. Okay. The other question you did ask me, the other question you did ask me, I didn't answer. I will answer now. So you said, Prophet Muhammad, according to you, is a sinner. You used some verses of the Quran. And you said, Jesus is not a sinner. He's sinless in the Quran. So you said, would you rather believe a sinner person or a sinless person? Here's the question. Here's the answer. Simple. In the Bible, we believe all prophets are sinners. All humans are sinners. Prophet Moses is a sinner. David is a sinner. Isaiah is a sinner. 
Zechariah is a sinner. But you still believe what they said about Jesus. So would you rather believe them? So if your logic is to say Prophet Muhammad is a sinner, therefore I'm not going to listen to him. I'm not going to listen what he says. So double standard, you have to, you need to disbelieve the prophets of the Bible because they are all sinners. They, all of them are sinners. Okay, that one point, yeah? Um, let me check the time. Oh, we can stop. Just two minutes, 45, 45. Ignore that, 45 seconds. Two minutes, yeah? Okay. So, he say, you said in the Bible it says sacrifice. But the context, is it human sacrifice? The answer is no. In the Old Testament. And Psalm chapter 49, verse 7. Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16. Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 30. Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20. Also, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Romans, chapter 2, verse 6. Matthew, chapter 12, verse 36. All these verses are telling us there is no human sacrifice. So where did the Quran go against the Old Testament? And the second one, you justified your point by saying Allah approved Torah and Injil. The context is, what Torah? What Injil? Torah, Allah said in the Quran many verses and Injil, people corrupted. They wrote with their own hands. If I give you some verses of the Quran, like chapter 2, verse 75, verse 79, or in chapter 3, verse 78, and many verses, like that, those verses. So Allah also said the Injil is the author, the author of Injil is Allah. In Injil, Jesus did not re receive from his disciples, but from Allah. Injil was there before Jesus was taken. So where does this come from? And Injil is just one Injil, not gospel. Gospel, they have gospels, not gospel. Injil is one, just one, not an Ajil. An Ajil which is gospels according to, according to them. Injil, it does not refer the word of Greek. Okay. So, now, we can start. So, just want to touch on one of the things that uh, Shiraz said about, oh, is Isaiah a sinner, Moses a sinner, and, and, and all these other uh, prophets. John 5, verse 46, you might have forgot. It says that Jesus says that um, Moses wrote of me. He actually said that. We know he said that. He said, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Or he wrote of me so what Jesus is doing there is basically confirming that yes what they said is correct so what is the earliest source of the words of Jesus the Gospels and it's the same Gospels that's affirming those people that Sarah's mentioned so there's nothing wrong with what they said Isaiah um, Moses and and the like now going back to the true atonement of every Sunni Muslim okay so, if you're not Quran only, but you are um, a believer in a hadith, you have to get your atonement from a stone called the Kaaba stone. Ibn Abbas narrated in the hadith, the Messenger of Allah said, the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than the milk. Then it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. This grade is Hassan. Now, <clears throat> this is the same stone, right, that will atone for you. You're hiding your camera, yes. Yeah, sorry. This is the same stone that will atone for you on Judgment Day. Ibn Araz narrated, the Messenger of Allah said about the black stone, by Allah, Allah will raise it on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with, testifying to whoever touched it in truth. That's Hassan. So that's why when you go to Mecca, that is why they kiss it and they adore it. Okay, so now again, he changed the topic by talking about the black stone. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay, so he said the prophets, 
of the Bible are sinners. We listen from them because Jesus approved them. But still his point was to show that I'm not going to listen anything from Prophet Muhammad because he's a sinner according to him. So the prophets of the Bible also are sinners, but he's still listening from them. But now again, Jesus himself in that verse he quoted now in John, Jesus lied because Moses, he said Moses wrote about me. What did Moses write about Jesus? There's no way. I'm waiting. You can give me. Okay. Jesus himself, he quoted many times in the Old Testament and he lied. And what he quoted from Old Testament is not even there. Like last time I challenged him, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44, verse 44 to 46. Jesus said that he was going to raise, come out from the grave in the third day. And he said, it's written in the Old Testament. The prophet, all prophets prophesied about me. And when you go to Old Testament, there's no such verse in the Old Testament. Also in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 38, Jesus lied about Old Testament. There's no or in that such verse in Old Testament. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, he will flow rivers of water. In the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 38, and it's not there. So Jesus of the Bible, you either believe the Bible is corrupted, or the Quran, you come to the Quran. Because Quran, if we compare the Quran and the Bible, the Bible is lying about Jesus. Because the Bible says Jesus is a godly one. Because God of the Bible said in the book of Psalm, chapter 37, verse 28, God will save his godly ones, but he will destroy the ungodly ones. Jesus was an abad... Okay, we'll come to that one. Okay. I'll finish next time. Okay. Yeah, so you said that Jesus lied. But that contradicts the what Muhammad revealed. Because we know, Surah 19, verse 19, that Isa, the Muslim Jesus, was pure. There is nothing in your Quran that says that Jesus is a sinner. There's nothing in your Quran that says Jesus was a liar. So, the question to you, Siraj, is do you receive Wahi? You don't receive Wahi. So let the Quran speak for itself. The Quran says he's pure, plain and simple. The Bible, before the Quran, right, Quran came 600 years later, X amount, says that Jesus is the Holy One, the Righteous One. Now, back to the point about atonement. This is about atoning, substitutionary atonement, taking the sins and replacing them, doing something with the sins of man and, and, and managing it. Now, what does that for the Muslim, particularly the Sunni Muslim? The Kaaba stone or Tauba, Tauba. So these are sets of conditions that Muslims have to follow. But the Bible says, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. Our, our works are like filthy rags. To a perfect God, it's not enough. That's the Bible's position. You cannot work for your salvation. But for the Muslim, rather than believe in Jesus, which was, who was prophesied for over 4,000 years about a Messiah coming according to Isaiah 53, who will be a suffering servant, who will die, shed his precious blood, for the sins of the world, be a perfect sacrifice, substitutionary like a ram or a sheep was, they believe in a Kaaba stone that will take away their sin. And as we can see, we see that as narrated by Ibn Abbas. So what do you okay. have to say about that? Okay. So first of all, I need to, um, I'm going to address about the uh, Holy um, Black Stone, the Holy Stone. Having a holy stone as a pillar, the Torah approves it. Genesis chapter 28, verse 16 to 18. Jacob had a holy stone as a pillar. So having a holy stone as a pillar is not a problem. And also a holy stone, a, a, a call forgave the sins of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 to 7 the sins of Isaiah was forgiven by a call and it's not the call himself itself forgiving it it's God forgiving it so in Islam 
the Holy Stone cannot forgive our sins. It's God forgives our sins by touching it. By asking God's forgiveness, Allah forgives our sins. In many ways, Christians, they say black stone, a stone, a stone forgive sins, the sins of Muslims. Also them, water forgives the sins of Christians by getting baptism. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 3. So now, the reason you get baptized is God to wash away your sins. And that's why Jesus was, was baptized. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 17, and chapter 3, verse 17, 13 to 17. And Mark, chapter 16, verse 16, no one is saved if you are not baptized. That's why Jesus was baptized. So if you compare Quran says Jesus is not a sinner and your Bible says Jesus is a sinner. So which book do you believe? So you cannot run to Quran at the same time you disbelieve the Quran and you justify your point by saying Quran says Jesus is, a, is sinless. But the Bible says Jesus is a sinner and, God, and a godly one. Okay. The Gospel of Psalm and uh, the book of Psalm chapter 37 verse 28. And also Mark chapter 16 and 16 verse 30 and 15 verse 34. Okay. It indicates that that Jesus is not is is ungodly one. Okay, so two, 20, two, 20 seconds. Yeah. Okay. okay, so now to respond to that, you call Jesus a liar, um, and you're going against what your own Quran says you should say. Remember, it says when you speak to the people of the book, speak to them gracefully, and you call Jesus a liar, which is not true. Um, it contradicts what you're saying, contradicts what the Quran says because there's nothing in the Quran that shows that Jesus was a liar or was a sinner. Okay, so, but when we look at the Quran, we do see some signs and some question marks about the character of the founder of Islam, Muhammad. So, and I'm, I say this with respect as well. It says in Quran chapter 4, verse 24 Also forbidden are married women accept female captives in your possession this is our last commandment to you lawful to you are all beyond these as long as you seek them with your wealth in a legal marriage not in fornication give those you have consummated marriage with their due dowries it is permissible to be mutually gracious regarding the set dowry surely allah is all knowing and all wise so so what we see here is encouragement for adultery. That a man in the, in the realms of war, because I know you're going to say it's in the conditions of war, is, is basically capturing women who can be married. That any Muslim who captures, captures a, a woman that is married and her husband is alive, you can do what you want. You can have sex with someone who is married. And that's a judgment, you know? And so this goes back to why we see Allah over no, numerous occasions continuously asking Muhammad to seek forgiveness and for the sins of the believing men and women. So when we look at the character of Christ, and once again, this is the reason why Jesus doesn't need atonement. And this is why maybe perhaps Muhammad needed atonement. Um, what we see is the actual reason. We see the reason why we needed a time. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Al Balaj. Al Balaj. Okay. Okay. So, so now again, another topic about slavery and ju during the war, the wars. Okay. First of all, in Christianity, welcome to Christianity. I'm going to introduce you to Christianity, where marriage is considered adultery and prostitution is permissible. You only find in the Bible. I like these verses I'm going to mention now. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verse 18. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 32. Jesus said, if you marry a divorced woman, you are committing adultery. 
Jesus, remember, according to the Bible, Jesus is again a single mothers and divorced women. They have to stay single in their life. In the entire life in the in, in the entire life. So Jesus also said, if you divorce your wife and marry another one, you're committing adultery. Also, the when so now marriage is considered adultery. But the problem is the same Bible contradiction, Jesus of the Bible is approving prostitution. That's why we have many brothels. We have many prostitutes. Scots, they go, they get paid. Why? Because they are the first ones to go to heaven according to the Bible. The gospel of Matthew chapter 21 verse 31. Jesus said the, uh, the, and the cor and tax corruptors and prostitution. Prostitutes will go to heaven before everyone else. Another, another verse. Okay. Marrying divorced woman is adultery. But prostitution is not adultery. So according to those verses, they contradict in one another. Another verse, let me finish with this one here. About the slavery of um, during the wars. If we come to the law of Jesus, which is the Torah, and that's why Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law of Torah, of Moses, but I have, ta I have come to fulfill them. Well, it was one of them. Yeah, it's about slavery, sex slavery during the wars. Okay. Imagine, let me finish. I'll no, give you three minutes. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'll give you three minutes. Doesn't matter. Imagine in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 10 to 14, God of the Bible approves sex slavery. My wife, if now I'm fighting against Christians or Jews, and if they capture my wife, example, or a Muslim's wife, that wife becomes his wife. He keeps her she, and she can keep her. She stays with him. If he, after having sex with her, if he doesn't like her, if he dislikes her, he has to release her, go. Sex slavery, captives. Also, Numbers chapter 31, okay, verse 40, 31 to 41. Three minutes and, and 18, 18 seconds. seconds. Okay, okay, so I've shown, I've showed you Surah 4, verse 24, where it talks about um, like I say, also forbidden are married women except female captives in your possession. Is that in the Quran? Yes, it is. See, one of the things you see is when you look at the Bible, some of the theocratic um, governing rules, stipulation, what you see is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saying, you know, carry out the justice that I ordain. But we know that theocracy, theocracy ended. That's fine. It's fine. Theocracy ended with Jesus. So where it says an eye for an eye, a two for a two, it ended with Jesus. So he says, I don't. You don't do eye for an eye or two for a two, but you turn the other cheek. You turn the other cheek. Now that this is something that came out before the Quran. So how is it that the Quran has now reverted back to now an eye for an eye and a two for two? But now that kind of touches, <clears throat> that also touches in with one of the reasons why Muhammad had some concerns about where he was going to go. And this is why I'm referring to atonement. Because atoning for sin is when you're getting right with God. So, how much have I got? One minute. <clears throat> One minute. Still got many yeah. times. So, in the got okay. three, three in minutes. Surah 46, verse 9, it says, I am not the first messenger ever sent, nor do I know what will happen to me or you. I only follow what is revealed to me, and I am only sent with a clear warning. My point is that who do you trust? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house. There are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. We know that where Jesus goes, is there's a guaranteed place for those who follow him and those who believe. So Muhammad, he was a bit concerned about where he was going to end up and what would happen to, to Muslims um, also. So, so now, when we look at the claim of um, 
this, this thing about sin and how it could affect and impact the final destination of somebody, we see that once again shown in both the Quran and the Hadith. So, Quran 66, verse 44 to 46. And it says, And if he, which is Muhammad, had forged a false saying concerning us, we surely should have seized him by his right hand or with power and might, and then certainly should have cut off his life artery or aorta. But isn't it interesting that in Sahih Bukhari 5 verse 59, it says that basically, uh, narrated by Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, and at this time I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. Are you so, so the justification of him being a true prophet and not having sin and so forth and being fully atoned is now you abrogated and contradicted by the fact that he you died in the way you he said time. would um, be of a false prophet. But go ahead. Okay, so I got 341. Okay. No, no, not for 341, but it can yeah, just be extra. No, the, that's probably about... Uh, you done 341, no, and no. I done 318. You did 318, so it's the second, so 18, so it's... So that's about... You've got about extra 30 seconds, but we still do two minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 230 then. Yeah. Okay, no, I need to stop yeah, because... Yeah, no. Okay. And the first one about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said in the Quran, chapter 46, verse 9, where he said, I do not know what will happen to me or nor to you. The context of that verse, many Christians do not read the last bit of the verse because it's destroying their claim. Because in the, in the end, sorry, in the end, Allah commanded Prophet Muhammad to say, I only follow what is inspired, what is what Allah has inspired me. What did Allah inspire Prophet Muhammad? And Allah said, Tell them that you are a plain warner. So if he doesn't know where he's going, about as, as Christians think, they think about that verse is about salvation, it's about the worldly life. Because Prophet never knew what was going to happen to him in this life about the future. But in judgment day, he knows where he's going to end up. In many verses of the Quran. And Allah said, say in the same verse. Allah said, tell them that I only follow what Allah has inspired me. Also, I'm a plain warner. Plain of what? A warner of what? Because Prophet explained in Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 728880. Prophet said, everyone will go to heaven except the ones who reject me. It's a clear cut. That's why prophet is a warner. That verse has got nothing to do about salvation. Even the last bit, it destroys Christian's claim. Also, Jesus himself is not the way and the truth anymore after he ascended to the heaven. If Jesus is the way and the truth until now, why Jesus needed another comforter to come and guide people to the way, into all the truth? That means Jesus, he was not sure that he was the way. He doesn't know where he's going to end up. That's why he needed another comforter to come and guide people. In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 14 and verse 13. And also Jesus said the comforter is more important than him. That's why he said the comforter will not come unless I go. And that's Prophet Muhammad, but Christians say is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was already there on this earth when Jesus was here on this earth. The condition, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter to come, Jesus must go, and then the Comforter will come. And who sends the Comforter? Jesus said, I will ask the God the Father to send the Comforter. The Gospel of John, chapter 16, the, the, chapter 14, verse 16. Two minutes. So yeah. two minutes and no. Two minutes and 24, because I had two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. So, another um, hadith which um, it, it, blows, it, it blows my mind in a way, because there was a pregnant woman, you might have noticed, Siraj, that got pregnant because of adultery. 
and under the commands of Muhammad, he requested that she be stoned. And so, basically, the ramifications of that was that now this child has become an orphan. And we know that according to um, the Islamic tradition or Islamic um, uh, rules, Sharia law, you can't adopt. Adoption is prohibited. You're not allowed to adopt. Now, I believe a fair God, an honest God, a loving God, because we believe God is love, he would prevent that. There's nothing wrong with adoption. And even to make matters worse, we know that um, Muhammad married Zainab. Zayid, his own adopted son's wife, after, he, after Zayid divorced her. So what is going on here? And once again, I go back to this thing about atonement. And um, we know the cover stone will have eyes and a tongue to intercede. That, that's your process of an atonement, according to your own um, Quranic uh, sources. Hadith, Quran. That there will be two eyes on this stone and a tongue that will intercede for the people that are, that are committed sin. So you rather believe that than the prophecy of four for 4,000 years of God incarnate, the Messiah, coming down and actually um, being the substitutionary atonement for the people rather than a sheep or a lamb that doesn't have infinite value, that doesn't have eternal value. You rather believe the stone as the intercessory means of atonement. This is questionable. Why would Muhammad order the stoning of a pregnant woman who committed adultery and cause the child to be an orphan? As, as a born-again Christian, the God of the Bible would not allow that to happen. Okay. Jesus wouldn't allow it to happen. Okay. So now, I'll come to the point where you said the law ends with ended with Jesus, the Torah. I'm going to Theocracy. yeah, I'm going to put dis disallow that one because Jesus of the Bible. When I see Jesus is a liar, I'm not saying according to Islam. I'm using the Bible according to Bible. Jesus is a liar and a sinner and cast one by God, same as Satan, because in Islam we only believe only Satan is the cast one. But in Christianity, the only prophet. And the beloved son of God, according to them, is the cast one by God, same as Satan. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23. So when I come to the law, did not end with Jesus. The proof is Jesus said in the gospel, the gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. He said, I have not come to abolish the law of Moses and the prophets, but I have come to fulfill them. The evidence is there. Jesus came to fulfill the law of Torah. And that's the law of Jesus until now. That's why Jesus of the Bible said children should be put to death if they disobey their parents. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 15 verse 4. And that's the law of Torah. And now he talked about uh, stoning the pregnant woman who committed adultery. It's in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 13 to 21. It says kill if a man... If a husband finds out that his wife slept, she's not virgin, and she slept with another man already, it says stone her, and that's the law of Jesus. You cannot criticize Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when you have the same thing in the Torah, and that's the law of Jesus. So now, what I'm saying is, Jesus did not even in Islam. You have three options when you kill some. When, if a person kills you and brother, your family, your relatives. You have three options. You either get revenge or get a penalty, fine, money, or you forgive. Even Jesus said forgive. But Jesus, let's come to the Bible. Did Jesus forgive his enemy? No. He said if the enemy attacks you, the other cheek, and the cheek, then turn away, turn, and turn the other cheek to the enemy. Did Jesus do that? No. He said that in the Gospel of Luke, Chapter 
He said that in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 28 to 30. But in the Gospel of John, chapter 8 and chapter 18, verse 22, Jesus was slapped by a man. Did Jesus turn the other cheek to the man? No, but he demanded. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So now to, to quickly respond to that, I don't know how you can arrive at that conclusion because we know that when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, right, and it's actually, there's actual historical evidence for Jesus being crucified, by the way. When he stood before Pontius Pilate, right, he was, uh, Pontius Pilate said that he should go and be scourged, okay? Up to that point, they were slapping him, you know, they accused him falsely, they lied about him. He didn't retaliate in any way. In fact, John 8, 11, basically we see um, Peter wanted to fight the guards who came for him. And Jesus said, Is it not me that will take the cup of my father, of, of the wrath of my father? So basically, he's saying that he's going to take the sin and the punishment that's due to mankind. This is his time, and he's going to go, and he's going to be obedient unto the cross. We see that in Isaiah 53, where it says that this suffering servant, the Messiah, will be obedient unto death and his, and his blood will be shared um, spilt as a, a, as a sin offering for many we know this we know this but look at the woman that was um, caught in adultery let's look at this woman they were going to stone her and kill her and what did Jesus say in John 8 verse 7 he said he that is without sin among you let him first cast the stone at her. We know in the Torah, that's what would happen, right? But Jesus fulfilled the law. And he said, actually, no, 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 no. Theocracy ends here. In me, I fulfill this law. I fulfill the Levitical law. I fulfill the law of Deuteronomy. I fulfill the law of Numbers. And what does he say? He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone. Let him first cast a stone. And what happened? They felt convicted and they departed. And they stopped. I think I've got a few seconds. Okay. And then look what, look what Jesus says. Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That's the heart of God. That's the love of, Je that's the love of God. You know, mercy, justice mercy someone in islam who steals they cut off their hands under sharia law that will never happen you know when you're focusing on scripture when you're focusing yeah, on no. the word of god and um, under jesus that would never happen. okay so now again about jesus being he's trying to prove that jesus of the bible is loves the people because of why he quoted John 7, 8, yes? John 8, 7. John 8, 7. Yeah, sorry. John 8, 7. Did Jesus deny about the law? He didn't deny. He said, let the one who is without a sin, let him stone. Stone the lady. He didn't say that law was cancelled. He asked, he ordered them to do that. But they never wanted to do that. They left by their own will. But Jesus in the beginning, he allowed them to do that, which indicates he came to follow the law of Torah. And again, prove, what proves that? The Gospel of Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. If Jesus came to fulfill the law of Torah and to finish, why did Jesus ask parents to put their children, and the, ask the parents to put their children to death if they cast them? Why? It doesn't make sense. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the law ended up with him. Yeah. And at the same time, he, uh, he's asking the parents to put to their children to death if they, being, if they are being rude to them. So where is the love? Did Jesus love his enemy? No. The Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 44, Jesus said to the Jews, by the way, this verse says Jesus was anti-Semitism. He was against the Jews and Israelites the ones who rejected him. He said, your father is devil, you belong to devil. 
and your father was a murderer. So according to this verse, it indicates Jesus allows and believes the Jews descendants were murderers, according to this verse, as he was and he was anti-Semitism. But according to that point, Jesus never forgave his enemies. Do you know why? Even in Revelation chapter 2, verse 23 and 23, do you know what Jesus said? I will strike her children. Why? I thought Jesus said loves. Loves the people. Where is the love? Okay, so <clears throat> the greatest love is to lay down your life for the sheep. There's no greatest love than to lay down your life. And when Jesus laid his life down, it was a form of um, atonement for many people he didn't even know. Would you do that, Siraj? No. 90, 100% of people who I could ask the same question to would never do that. They're not going to lay down their life for people they don't know as an atoning sacrifice. But God incarnate did. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth did. And he rebuked the Pharisees because they didn't have mercy. They didn't have the heart of God. They didn't focus on the, tr the spirit of the law, which was justice and mercy. So that's why they wanted to kill this woman who committed adultery like they've never committed adultery. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart already. And so they were be they were being they were being yeah, we finished. they were being hypocrites. And so look what he says in um, the same uh, book and chapter that you quoted from. John 8, verse 42, it says, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So the Pharisees, after 4,000 years of messianic prophecy, we, there were Jews at the time that followed Jesus, that accepted Jesus as the Messiah. But these guys, because of the, the plaud, plaudits of men, because they love applause, they loved the greeting of men. They loved it so much. And their positions of authority. They rather have that than accept their Messiah. You know? and, and one thing um, uh, also is, you could say, in a way, and many people do this, including Muslims, including Hindus, people that hear the truth, yeah. they sold their soul. That's it. Okay. So last one, maybe, I think so. And... Um, where I, again, before I made a mistake about the reference about Revelation chapter 2, verse 23. It's not 23, it's and verse 21, sorry. And so, Jesus, even after the crucifixion, Jesus classed the crucifixion as an evil act. The reason behind the crucifixion, Jesus classed as an evil act. Because he wished bad for Judas because of betraying him. If Jesus came to die for the sins of Christians and mankind, why would Jesus disown, forsake his own disciple, Judas Iscariot, for betraying him? Because the credit would go to Judas. He's the, without him, Christians would not have salvation through the evil crucifixion. Because Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 26 verse and chapter 20 chapter 26 verse 24, he wished bad for Judas. He said it would be better even if he had not been born yet for betraying him. Let's come to the point. Even the reason the people, the crucifixion itself is evil, it is an evil act. Why? Because Jesus asked the asked God the God to forgive the sins of Romans. Why? Roman soldiers. Because of crucifying him. If the crucifixion is a holy incident and is not an evil act, why would Jesus ask God to forgive the sins of Roman soldiers and the Jews by saying, Oh Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Why? In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. Why? 
Jesus again in the in judgment day, Jesus will ignore Christians because of their evil acts. Why? If Jesus died for their sins, why will Jesus, will Jesus ignore them in judgment day? The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Christians always say that verse is about the false Christians. It's not about false Christians. Jesus said it's because of prophesizing false about false prophecy. It's about giving false prophecy. It's not about Jesus. He never said you are fake followers or fake Christians. He never said that. False Christians. He said because of that, because of committing evil. If Jesus died for their sins, why would he ignore them? If Jesus died for their sins, why would, would did Jesus say every man will give an account according to his deeds? The Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 32. Why? So the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So everyone has to work out their own salvation. Okay, so that means coming to the real sense about their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, with God. So that's why the Torahs are there. You know, that's why the Ten Commandments is there. The Ten Commandments serves as a mirror to look at yourself. Have you lied before, Siraj? Yes. Have you stolen before, Siraj? Yes. Have you looked at a woman with lust before? Yes, maybe you have. Yes, most, most likely. So if you was to stand before a righteous God, you would have told, you would, you'd be standing as a liar, as a thief, and as someone who has looked at a woman with lust. That kind of person cannot enter the kingdom of God. It's not possible. Not into a perfect, uh, sinless environment. So that's why it's, it's mandatory that the person is atoned for that their sins and the debt of their sin is dealt with and ransomed. Now, the um, vicarious atonement of, of Islam is such that when a Muslim, according to the Hadith, Sahih Muslim, when a Muslim goes to hell, because the Bible, well, the Quran says in Surah 19, verse 71, that all Muslims will pass over hell. When they actually do go to hell, right, Apparently, the God-fearing get ransomed for a Christian or a Jew. Not an atheist, not a Hindu, not a Buddhist. And Siraj knows the truth. But when the God-fearing, apparently according to the uh, Quran, they will be taken out and they will be replaced with either a Christian and a Jew. So therefore, the wrath of Allah is satisfied by the ransoming and exchange of a Christian or a Jew. Does this sound like a fair God? Does this sound like God judging individuals on their per personal individual merits? No. The answer is no. So, if okay. you're able to explain it. Go okay. Ahead. In Islam, we believe and sorry again, um, I need to go and say, let me carry on this about Jesus. Jesus of the Bible did not come to die for anyone's sins. And the evidence is that I said before, and I'm repeat, uh, I'm, I'm going to say some other things which indicate that Jesus never died for anyone's sins. So Jesus said, in order God the Father, God the Father to forgive your sins, you have to forgive others. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 14. So if Jesus died for your sins, what other, what other sins do you have so God can forgive you? That's a, question, that's a question mark. Question mark. Okay. If Jesus died for the sins of mankind and Christians, why Jesus of the Bible said, according to last ones, yeah, last, in last five minutes, why Jesus of the Bible said, if you sin against the Son of Man, your sins will be forgiven. But if you sin against the Holy Spirit, your sins will never be forgiven. The Gospel of Matthew chapter and, and 12 verse 32 and the Gospel of Luke chapter 6 verse 38 to 40. No, sorry. The Gospel, uh, the gospel of Luke chapter... 3 verse 28 to 30. Yes, if I'm not wrong. So Jesus, if Jesus died for your sins, and if you sin against the Holy Spirit, your sins are not forgiven. 
cross and then Jesus died for nothing. So there's no salvation in Christianity. And Jesus said in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 verse 49, he said when everyone will be put to will be will be will be put into hellfire. So where is the love again? If you are saying God Allah is going to exchange and put Christians and Jews into the hell, where is love? That's not just whatever you're saying. So even the Bible says Jesus said when everyone is will put into the hell. The Gospel of Mark chapter 9 verse 49. Do you understand now? Okay. So now, um, so what you have to realize is that when Jesus came, he set the bar even higher than what we see in the Old Testament. He said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. If you say fool to a brother or sister, that person is in danger of the hellfire. So the, there, there is a stringency about the truth of the words of God. There is a stringency. There's not a slackness. When Christ died on the cross, he died to build the bridge between humanity and himself. That was just the point, that you cannot um, 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 make it to heaven without your sins being atoned for. Now, what you have to really realize is that because God incarnate came down and died on the cross as a substitutionary atonement, the sacrifice, because of the person, is of infinite value. The sacrifice and the atonement is of infinite value so the benefit to anyone no matter who they are where they're from what they have done the bridge has been built for them to come to the cross now what you um have ignored uh, siraj is hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 look what it says for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So we don't believe in perpetual grace, where you can keep sinning and doing what you want. What this, what this is, is basically saying, there's no more sacrifice for sins. Verse 27 says, but a, fair, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries he that despised Moses Lord died without mercy under two or three witnesses I'm, I'm reading the Bible so I'm not lying to you verse 20, 29 of how much sore of punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth to me, I will re recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, the sacrifice isn't just playground. If a person sins, continues to sin, yes, there, is, there is judgment pending. So, Okay, I'm going to conclude now, maybe. Yeah. It's too late, it's getting late. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, so the, where I said the Gospel of uh, Luke chapter 3 verse 28 is Mark chapter 3 verse 28 to 30, yeah? Um, so, what I'm saying is now, my conclusion is Christianity is against Jesus of the Bible. We believe Quran is holy. Because that's why Christians, they cannot prove whether Jesus is a sinner or not unless by using the Quran. So they cannot prove Jesus to be a sinless by using the Bible. So you can tell if the Quran is from Satan, as Christians believe, and the Quran says Jesus is holy, and the Bible says Jesus is the cast one by God, same as Satan, and he's an ungodly one, an holy man, and a liar, a deceiver, a false prophet. He was given false messages. Like example, Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse chapter 16, verse 32, he said, there will be a time all of you will run away from me, but my father will be with me. Again, during the crucifixion, according to Christians, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verse 34, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, 
One verse, Jesus said, my father will be with me, but you will run away from me. But the other verse, Jesus was forsaken by the God, the, by God of the fa uh, God the Father. So therefore, Jesus was given false messages. Why? Because Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 9, God of the Bible says, if a prophet is given false message, I, the Lord, deceived that prophet. According to Bible, Jesus was deceived by God. Another verse again, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 22, God of the Bible said, if a prophet is in, says or predict about the future, and his prediction does not come true, his, that prophet spoke without my authority, and he should be taken out among the um, um, and out among and out from and amongst the community of Israelites. So Jesus was taken away. So why? Because Jesus is a false prophet. Even in the Bible, he was given false prophet messages. Why? In Islam, we don't believe Jesus is a liar. We don't believe Jesus is a false prophet. We believe Jesus is prophet, is a, a, a true prophet, a chosen one. But Christians also are antichrist again by saying, because his God is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The God of Jesus is only God the Father. Jesus and his disciples, they only worship God the Father. That's why Jesus said, we, what we worship what we know. We, the only, and the true worshipers will worship God the Father. This verse tells us, John chapter 4, verse 22, 1 to 22. If you do not worship the God of Jesus, which the, Jesus himself worshipped, which is God the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit, you are a false worshiper. Christians are antichrist. The God of Jesus and his disciples is God the Father. That's why he said, my God and your God. Can I, can I the Gospel can I, of John chapter it. 17, verse 20. You guys have been last fair. one. You yeah. guys have been no, no. Fair. Let him you say guys last have been one. Fair so far. Okay, last okay. one. No, he started. Uh, you started. Uh, yes, I started. Yeah, so I could one finish. One one okay, like, one uh, minute. Give him one, one minute. One minute. Okay. one minute. Okay, one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I think the fundamental thing is this. And this is one of the signs of the atonement. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, yeah. so, so, yeah. so this is where I'm You will speak. Thank you, man. Thank you guys. Being fair so far. Okay, so. Surah uh, 46, uh, verse 9. We always have to bear this in mind. There's always going to be that question mark of where you're going to go when you die. And sin can make it even more difficult to know. Muhammad said, I am not the first messenger ever sent, nor do I know what will happen to me or to you, but to believe in the Lord. So, I just want to encourage my, my, my brother here, Siraj, to, um, to, to look into some of what I said, and to look into the truth of God, um, and to look at... Uh, what we see uh, in the Torah, Deuteronomy 19, verse 15, where it says, um, Out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let the matter be established. The Gospels reference um, Matthew and John as witnesses of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we call them Gospels. So Matthew and? Matthew and John. They were eyewitnesses. What about Luke and Mark? Yeah, they were apostles with them. Okay, yes. Yeah. But that's good. No, okay, anyways. So we'll okay. Talk, we'll, we'll, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, thanks so much. We'll talk again. Anyways, yeah. yeah. One minute. Yeah, one minute. So now what I'm going to say is conclusion here. The guy who even invented Christianity, which is Paul himself. Jesus said, I saw Satan falling down, lightning like a light. The Gospel of Luke chapter 10 verse 18. And Paul himself, when he said, when he saw Jesus on his way to Damascus, he said in the Gospel of, I mean, the book of Acts, chapter 9 verse 3 to 5, and chapter 22 and verse 6 to 8, he said, I saw Jesus in vision, light. He said, on my way to Damascus, a light flashed me. So and Satan, Jesus said what? I saw Satan falling down like light, like a light. And Paul said also same light. So light flashed him. So Paul, look, even this story is not adding up. It's not adding up. Do you know why? Because in those and chapters, the ones I just gave them, Paul said, after he saw the flash lighting him, lightning flash, and flash around him, 
he said, who are you? Lord, how did he know if that's the Lord Jesus? If I see someone, I, never, I wasn't even expecting, I don't even know how he looks like. How can I say, and who are you? Are you Lord? Question mark. And he said that no one can say to Jesus, Lord, without yes. the Holy Spirit. And, and, Jesus, no and Jesus himself, he responded, I am Jesus. He didn't say, I'm Lord. So now, Paul himself is the one who said what? Without, he said the most important thing, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 18. He said, what does it matter? The most important thing whether from false motives or true motives, Christ must be preached. And because of this, I rejoice and I will rejoice. I will keep rejoicing because of that. So Matthew also, he lied about the Old Testament. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2, verse 23, he said, as it's written, Jesus was supposed to live in the city of Nazareth. And he said, as it's prophesied by the prophets. Where he says Jesus is, was going to live in the city of Nazareth and he was, called, he was going, and his name was going to be Nazareth. Where is that in the Old Testament? Lies. Also, Paul said that. The Gospel of uh, Paul and um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. Paul said, it says in the Old Testament that he was going to die for three days and three nights he will come up. Jesus also was given false messages. He lied. He said he will be in the heart of the ground for three days and three nights. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 to 40. But when it comes to the cruel and the crucifixion, according to Christians, he was in the heart of the ground for two nights and one day. Where is that? Three days and three nights. Where is the sign of Jonah? If the sign of Jonah was to stay in the in the belly or uh, the belly of the fish and he did not die, then the sign of Jesus should be the same as the sign of Jonah. He should be in the three days and three nights for the in the heart of the grave, and he should not die same as Jonah. So, but Jesus, he was in the heart of the ground for two nights and one day. Where he says that in the Matthew chapter twenty-eight verse one, John chapter twenty verse one, Mark chapter sixteen verse two, the Gospel of Luke chapter twenty-four verse one. It says Jesus was in the heart of the ground for two nights and one day. So Jesus, what is the answer? Christians say Jesus is not a liar. If Jesus is not a liar, then you have to admit the Bible lied about Jesus and is corrupted. Otherwise, you have to say Jesus is a liar. Why? Because the Bible also is edited. As I gave many verses, some verses were removed and edited. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, verse 18, and chapter 18, verse 11, chapter 20, verse 16, chapter, same chapter, Matthew, same book, Matthew, chapter 23, verse 14. Also, Mark chapter 8, last one, 4, verse 8. No, ch Mark chapter 6, verse 11. Mark chapter 7, verse 16. Mark chapter 9, verse 44 and verse 46. Mark chapter 11, verse tw th uh, 26. Mark chapter 15, verse 28. And Mark again, chapter and uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 8. The Gospel of Luke again, chapter th uh, and, and 17, verse 36. Again, the Gospel of Luke, chapter and seven and, and twenty chapter twenty three verse seventeen John one and five four and five four again John one John five seven again Acts chapter and eight verse thirty six and Acts chapter fifteen verse thirty and thirty four Acts chapter twenty four verse seven Acts chapter twenty eight verse twenty nine Acts chapter two, uh, Romans chapter 16 verse 24 all these verses are missing from some other versions and some other verses were edited in some other versions so which one did God inspire then Paul here the one he said all in scri scri uh, scriptures is inspired by God why because of correcting cor uh, correcting and what and guidance so if correcting and guidance which one is correcting which one this one or this one? This version or this version? Where are these verses? versions? Where are these verses? are missing in the Bible. So Paul himself said, again, he contradicted his own words. The Gospel of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6. Chapter 7, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Jesus said, Paul said, I have no command from God, but I give my own opinion. If he gives his own opinion, 
why did he lie in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 by saying all in scriptures by is inspired by God for correcting and guidance so how can Paul's opinion be inspired by God when he said I have no command from God and also Luke also said chapter 1 verse 3 he said after I investigated everything, I decided to write an account for you. He didn't mention the Holy Spirit. He didn't mention about the God and God inspiring him. Where is the evidence? Lies and lies and lies. So the answer is Paul lying about Jesus and Christianity. Christianity is man-made. It's got nothing to do with Jesus. Christians are antichrist. Jesus, the man, did not practice Christianity, did not worship the triune God did not believe to, and did not worship God the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but only God the Father. Muslims, only God. David, only God. All of them, God. Muslims, Christians are saying only Muslims are wrong. Why? Because their God is one. So since the same Jesus, God, the God of Jesus is only one. Why Jesus of, your, of the Bible is not wrong, but Muslims are wrong? Just because we have one God, not three persons in one, same as Jesus. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa